Good morning, afternoon or evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back on this wonderful Wednesday for another daily cryptocurrency market update. If you're new around here, every single day at 1 p.m. UK time, we release an update just like this one to help you stay up to date with the latest and greatest things happening within the crypto space. And also we look at other markets. Um, as we know, there is correlation there to try and help us work out where our small but exceptionally significant market is heading. And that's where we're going to, that's what we're going to be doing. Um, in this daily market update. It's going to be a jam-packed one as always. We're going to start things off with a clip of Tika Tawari talking about how institutions bend the truth, certainly when it comes to um, the cryptocurrency market, looking at it historically. You know, they have previously came out publicly and said one thing and done another. This is a very common practice for institutions. Because they are a large pool of money, they often need to hide their um, sort of uh, footprints, if you will. And they'll often do that by creating a media narrative for example if they want to accumulate that will cause retail to panic into their um, buy orders and it kind of looks like almost a little bit of what we've got going on now very interesting to me that you've had some monumental news for bitcoin i.e blackrock the largest institution in the world looking to get into the bitcoin game yet you have um retail very very uh, negative and we actually have been uh, nothing short of a bull this year we have at certain times said short term we're not quite sure are you what's going to happen in the next week or so but we are mid to long term bulls and we think this is a now a bull market for uh, bitcoin which you can see based on the charts you know we've been very spot on on uh, altcoins will catch up and ultimately you know we've looked at a scenario that's potentially playing out here we have told people not to short this support um, because the short squeeze is coming and you are getting that so We'll be diving into all the technicals. We'll start off with that clip of Tika Tawari. Uh, then, of course, we'll dive into the news yesterday um, or, or what took place yesterday in the congressional hearing. Now, here at allincrypto.com, we sat through the entire hearing and we made a note of every single question and comment that was made in regards to cryptocurrency, digital assets or anything in between um, to help you... To to basically make it so that you guys don't have to sit through the whole thing because it's quite boring. There wasn't actually that much on crypto, but some of what was there was interesting. So we will look at that. Then, of course, you do have the CPI out today. Expectations are 6.3. Um, we'll look at some charts. We'll talk about another um, entering of a $1.5 trillion asset manager, Franklin Temple, uh, turn uh, entering for the, the spot ETF race. It must mean that they know it's close. Very likely was always close with BlackRock entering. And then you've got others coming up with weird and wonderful ways to try and get Ethereum uh, ETFs passed through and uh, so on and so forth. So let's dive into the video, guys. Let's start off, as promised, with a clip of Tika Tawari talking about how institutions lie, certainly when it comes to crypto. On September 12th, Jamie Dimon says Bitcoin is a fraud. He says he'll fire anyone of his traders buying Bitcoin. Bitcoin drops 24%. When Jamie Dimon speaks, people listen, people listen. So that weekend, we found out that the largest buyer of a, of a Bitcoin fund that's in Europe, that buys physical Bitcoin, right? The largest buyer was Morgan Stanley and JP Morgan. And that's not illegal. He says it's a fraud. It says he'll fire anyone that buys it. Yes. And at the same time, his company is buying His it. company is buying it. So, it's just, I mean, so unethical. Right. Okay, George Soros. George Soros, in Eight January 24th, <laughs> price was already down, calls Bitcoin a bubble, says Bitcoin is the worst, you know, the worst investment in the world. Don't buy Bitcoin. Don't buy Bitcoin. Basically throws uh, gasoline on the fire yeah. at this point. And then what do we find out? So he says bubble here. It drops 44%. Right. And then here in April, for two months later, guess what we find out? Yeah. His $26 billion family office has approval to buy cryptocurrency. Right. And you only, we only knew about it publicly right. here. Here. And yes. this is the kind of thing that George, George Soros is famous for this, talking yeah. the sterling down. Yeah. And what did he do? He stole the pensions of all the little people. Yeah, made a billion. Yeah. Okay. So then here now, Goldman Sachs, this again, February 7th, most cryptocurrencies will crash to zero. Now, I remember when they said this in February, and I had, through my network, I knew that Goldman Sachs was setting up a crypto trading desk. Absolutely knew they were setting up a crypto trading desk. And I then, remember you telling me that. Right. And then, uh, of course, they were denying it. No, yeah, we're not. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. we're not. No, we're not. Yeah. 
Price falls down 27%. And then what do we find out? We find out here, uh, they say BTC zero. And then we find out just before May, new trading desk. Not only that, they put $400 million to buy a cryptocurrency trading platform. There we have it, guys. And what do you think they're doing right now? This is why we at All In Crypto, myself as a technical analyzer, it's something that I pride myself on being. It's what you know I plan on doing as a career. Um, we follow the charts because you can't you know, lie in the charts. The charts are an accurate representation of buyers and sellers. And that's what moves them. And this is why we follow the charts. And this, we, we, we still absolutely assess that things really don't look that bad. Okay. And the interesting thing for Bitcoin is we have that correlation right now, guys, there's a huge opportunity setting up. We're looking at it at all in crypto. Um, we're ultimately positioning in, in, in Bitcoin exposed assets that will give you a higher beta return on Bitcoin. They all look the same. You know, this is, this is, these are, this is a Bitcoin miner, Bitcoin related stocks. Um, and actually, Bitcoin against other assets. You know, we think there's a good chance with volatility as low as it is. Let's get rid of volume. The, this is bear market low volatility. And if you look at the bottom four, let's take the draw tool off and say something like Ethereum. You know, your, your, your bear market typically ends on low volatility. And look at the volatility here. So people, as always, I think you've got a lot of people that just completely miss this entire move. It's one of the things we got right on, on this channel. Um, we don't get everything right. We get a lot of things wrong. Um, and now they're hoping that it comes back and they can get that second shot. That second shot's gone, ladies and gentlemen. This train has left the station. Altcoins are still at bargain basements, in my opinion. Um, we'll dive into a little bit more technical stuff in just a second. Yesterday, you had the congressional hearing where Gary Gensler essentially stood in front of a committee to talk about the SEC and give an oversight of the SEC. And there wasn't a great deal of, uh, if you guys don't want to read this article at allincrypto.com, check the link in the description. You can listen to it. We have got an AI bot that we've integrated so that, you know, I, I'm, I'm dyslexic myself. I never thought I'd be in a position where I was writing articles and, and, and doing so much reading. I've never done so much reading in my life. But, um, you know, Gensler started things off very um, sort of with a, with a strict tone, you know, this was his reply. The first question was talking about oversight and regulatory clarity. But if they were to live up to the investment protection built into our current laws, it would help investors. But right now, unfortunately, there is significant non-compliance and it's a field which is rife with fraud, abuse and misconduct. Um, talks about a number of things. Uh, he talks about how, you know, the industry's, his, his organization is only 3% larger than it was seven years ago and that he's struggling in certain areas. Lummis talks and brought up a good point comparing crypto regs to banking regs and showing the in comparison there. Please do come and check out allincrypto.com and give this a read. It was great. Uh, the conclusion, of course, was um, throughout the entire thing, they had constantly said, look, well, you're going after and, and bringing all these lawsuits when 80% of them aren't mandated. You don't have to do that. You're doing that off your own back. And, and you know, he, he's obviously got something to prove, you know, and, and we know that with Gensley. He wants to be yelling eventually. Um, and he'll make examples and power grab where he can for the SEC and the government. Um, but it was very interesting. We sat through the entire thing. Uh, they talk about account staff bull accounting bulletin 101. Um, which was interesting and a, a whole load of other things. Um, so we didn't get much insight there. Regulations are coming. They're going to be the very thing that propels this industry into the hundreds of, who knows, maybe hundreds of trillions, but certainly in terms of value flowing through it, but tens of trillions. Um, and it was a very um, interesting kind of um, hearing, not as much mention of crypto as we thought. Today, of course, you've got the CPI, which is expected to come out at 3.6. Of course, the CPI is the main driver for monetary policy. Um, and monetary policy is the main driver of markets because it directly impacts liquidity. Guys, subscribe to this channel, um, you know, because we really do correlate everything quite nicely. In seven days time, seven days and seven hours, would you look at that? You've got the official rate hike, 
um, which is currently probability of a 93% non-hike. I would say they're not going to hike in the next one. We've got Europe tomorrow, which don't look like they're going to hike. Um, the dollar is, of course, the other side of the Bitcoin story. However, despite the dollar being strong, the stock market being down, crypto is doing quite nicely. Um, and we'll see. Is this just a fake nicely or is this, you know, I'll, this, this is what we want to see. And this is, what, this is our bullish scenario, right? which you're going to say, well, it's not very bullish, but short term, it's going to set up for more mid to longer term sort of upside. I want to see this into October, November. I don't particularly want to see this and then a harsh slam down because that's going to set you up for more broader, trustable structure to the downside. And then you're looking at your deeper ABC. I want to see this kind of drifting off and we've compared it to... What we saw over here and this could be very much what you're going to see in a similar kind of fashion you know you're going to sort of come out of this and remember we traded this on the channel etc cetera, etc cetera. um so we're we're not short-term bears necessarily we're just short-term okay we said for september expect more downside we've been right so far it will turn i think it will turn sort of back end of uh, september going into october until unless we see you know something come out that, that sort of really moves things i'm not particularly too bearish on this at all um, and actually think that certainly once it starts picking momentum everyone's going to have to get on the right side of it uh, yesterday you had franklin temple investments templeton investments file for a, another bit uh, bitcoin etf they're all getting involved it's a very good sign you've now got hashtags mixed ethereum futures filing joins crypto etf race um they're basically trying to put forward a, a, an ETF for Ethereum that's not 100% spot backs. It's a basket of things and, and hoping that the regulators may like that. It's all coming. Guys, head over to allincrypto.com to stay up to date with the latest and greatest things happening within the crypto space. Of course, subscribe to the channel. We'll keep you up to date. We'll keep you right. Um, and of course, if you want to join the Patreon, find out what I'm buying and where I'm buying it and the opportunities that we bring forward. We did an amazing update on Sunday. Uh, please do consider doing so. We've got a very good retention rate for Patreons. Uh, typically, I mean, we've got people that are, you know have been there for um, a year plus, as long as we've been sort of going. Um, so do check that out. On that note, I'm going to love and leave you. If you've enjoyed the content, like us, appreciate those a comment, and I'll catch you in the next one. Thanks for watching, guys. See you in the next.